Service Center Corporation and the Pranic Healing Foundation of the Philippines. Good day, dear brothers and sisters. We welcome everyone as we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the third Sunday of Lent, with the theme, Let Us Keep God's Temple Holy. The Mission Communications Foundation, Incorporated, of the Society of the Divine Word, SVD, brings to you this Eucharistic celebration at the Sanctuary of the Divine Word Chapel of the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, Christ the King Mission Seminary, E. Rodriguez Senior Avenue, Quezon City. Our Mass Presider is Reverend Father Venerando Yatur SVD, Seminarian's Head Prefect of the Christ the King Mission Seminary. And as one community and family gathered in Christ, let us all begin our Eucharistic celebration. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, who made us his holy temples at our baptism. May his grace and peace be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us renew our awareness that we, we sin. We profane the holiness of God's presence in ourselves and in others. For the times we have behaved disrespectfully in our church who received the Eucharist not properly disposed, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the times we have failed to appreciate the sacredness of our persons, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the times we have not respected the dignity and rights of our neighbor, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Ten Commandments enshrined values and duties which are valid not only for the Jews, but also for all human beings and forever. Brothers and sisters, the first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covey your neighbor's house, and you shall not covey your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, ye have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, ye have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear enlightening the eye. Lord, ye have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, ye have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, ye have the words of everlasting life. Preaching a crucified Messiah has always seemed a vain enterprise, yet the fact remains that it is through the cross of Christ that the all-wise God has redeemed the world. Such is St. Paul's forceful reminder today. Brothers and sisters, the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in a temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, 
as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out all of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins on the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop, stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 40 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, many began to believe in his name, and when they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what sign can you show us for doing this? The Jews were complaining about what Jesus has done to those sailing in the temple area. They were wondering why did Jesus had, has done that by, by, uh, by the words, no? That making the temple a marketplace. When we try to reflect about the sign, Jesus was both man and God, human and divine. When he speaks as a human person, of course he will be angry, he has emotion, and at the time the humanity of Jesus was so strong. He tried himself to let those selling out of the temple area. But when he, when we, when he was asked by the Jews about the sign, he was preparing the sign that he is also God. Destroy this temple and the third day he will raise it up. The Jews did understand the words of Jesus. For the Jews, it was a physical temple. Forty more years that the temple was constructed. But for Jesus, he's referring to the temple of his body. God is a God of surprises. God as a, is a God wherein he has other meaning in what he is trying to portray. I remember the, the uh, song, Footprints in the Sun. They were, two of them were walking together 
that man and with Jesus, they were happily conversing each other. But when the person was experiencing tribulations, challenges in life, problems one after the other, he tried to see the footprints in the sun. And he found out that is only one set of footprints. And he complained to God, Lord, you said, once I will follow you, you will lead me along the way. But why? At times I need you the most. I have problems one after the other. Why did you leave me behind? So the person was thinking that that is his own footprints. But God said to the man, I did not reject you. I am with you always. Remember the, two, the set of footprints there. Yes, it's only one set. But it is I carrying you. It is not you, but it is I. So the, the, the concept of that man, that when times of need, God will leave him behind. But in reality, that's the other way around. God was there all the time. That's why I said in today's gospel, we can see that the Jews misinterpret the words of Jesus. Destroy this temple, and the third day I will raise it up. It was a miscommunication between Jesus and the Jews, speaking in a different perspective, the same reality seeing in a different way. I remember when I was in the Paris, it was December 15, 2008. I was traveling on the way to my Paris, preparing for Misa Aguinaldo. I prayed for the Lord, Lord, I'm going back to my Paris. I prayed that you, I may be safe, nothing will happen to me along the way. But sad to say, in my way back to my Paris, what five hours ride, in the middle of my journey, the car was um, in danger and I met an accident. It was 16 meters down and I cried and complained to the Lord. Lord, it is unfair. I followed you all the way. Why did you allow me to meet an accident? Painful for me because it seems God abandon me on that time. I cried, complained, and complained, and complained, until finally I was so tired of complaining, then came to my mind, are you not safe? Nabalian ka ba? Namatay ka ba? So, four of us is in the car. We have no major damages. So, just Something came to my mind that even though I was on that accident, I was still in a safe mode. So the concept of safety for me, nothing will happen to me in, a, in bad times. But for Jesus, Safety means even though you are in the dark night of your soul, God 
is always there. So I was safe that time and I said to the Lord, I'm so sorry. I have different perspective of what I experience. But for God, He's telling me, I know what is best for you. So going back to the gospel for today, the temple that is trying to say is a temple that is uh, that uh, the body of Jesus. Jesus is there. Jesus is th did not leave us behind, but it is Jesus is telling us, "I know I'm here always for you." Amen. Let's all stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We gather together in the house of God to celebrate the most sacred act of worship. Let us present our petitions for the needs and intentions of all mankind. As we say, Lord, make us holy. Lord, make us holy. That the people of God all over the world may always offer the Eucharistic sacrifice with undefiled hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord, make us holy. That all mankind may treasure the values enshrined in the Ten Commandments and live by them in perfect love for God and neighbor, we pray. Lord, Lord make us holy. holy that the legislators may be guided by the wisdom of God's law in formulating the laws of every civil society. We pray. Lord, make us holy. That all human beings may be respected in their basic rights and never be subjected to humiliating treatment or conditions. We pray. Lord, Lord make Jesus. us holy that all of us may treasure the sacredness of our own persona as well as that of others and never defile it through sinful actions. We pray. Lord, make us holy. That those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world may inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. We pray. Lord, make us holy. For the family thanksgiving prayer of Malu Agkawili, Maria Cristina Samano, Claire Esguera, Nemesio Alvarez, Liwayway, Dean and Alvin Mascardo, Candido and Eloisa Pua and Redoblado family, healing for Dennis and Linda Redoblado, Stella and Gerardo Canlas, Renato Nievera, Edwin and Alexander Agawin Jr., Jean Hara, and John G. De Ca Del Castillo. Eternal repose for the souls of Dominador, 
Deborah, Gaudencio and Ruth Cabatu, Juan, Nilda, Rina and Vicente Sr. Redoblado, Cesar, Liberato and Rosita Meneses, Florentina and Manolo Santa Maria, Alberta and Mateo Macasay, Victor Kaiser and George Arguelles. Let us pray. Lord, make us holy. Let us pray in silence for our own personal intentions and all the intentions offered in this Mass. We pray, Lord, make us holy. For the increase of vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make us holy. Lord of all holiness, you want to dwell in the hearts as in the most precious temple. Renew in us the awareness of your sanctifying presence Cleanse us from all our impurities and reconsecrate us to your service forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant them. We who beseech pardon for our own sins, may we take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feasts, 
with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent in prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which the, they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace as you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, we deal the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified O God who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opened the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks <clears throat> and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new an eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life in the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant them by the power of the spirit of your love. Because day of eternity among the members of your son on whose body and blood we have communion. <clears throat> Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, Hunesto, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when an earthly pilgrimage is done that they may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. Their communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. We bless Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and extol you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. That the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. The Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed is called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
God, our Father, loving and merciful, bring together and keep all families in perfect unity of love and mutual support. Infuse in each member the spirit of understanding, forbearance, and affection for each other. Keep quarrels, bitterness, and pitiness far from them and their occasional failures. Instill forgiveness and peace. May the mutual love and affection of parents be a source of loving, obedience, and discipline. May their chastity and fidelity be an inspiration for their children. Instill in children such self-respect that they may respect others, obey their parents, and those in authority, and grow in mature independence and the tender joy of friendship. Make the mutual affection and respect of families a sign of Christian life here and hereafter, through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that are binding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by observing His commandments. Thanks be to God. was offered by Achievers Fuel and Service Center Corporation and the Pranic Healing Foundation of the Philippines.